Arg. The coyotes are squawking during the daytime and we have a broken down truck. Friday. We made it. Uh, if you're watching this on a Friday, happy Friday. If you're not watching this on a Friday, uh, happy Friday in the future or the past, either one. So Grumpy Camel has been very friendly lately. It's kind of making me nervous. <laughs> He's actually our intact alpaca. So he is a full breeding alpaca. He's kind of old. I think he just turned... What did he turn? Ah, oh, he's old. He's an old man. I can't remember what he turned. Um, it's like 18 maybe in December. I don't remember. But Pepper Salt, that guy right there, he is non-breeding anymore. He has been castrated. He's super friendly. But that little jerk right there, he's not aggressive, but he's just grumpy all the time. Well, he's grumpy right now, but he's been kind of friendly lately. So... I know, that's great. Times are changing, or he's just in a better mood for the time being. That will change too. Happy Friday. Hi guys, okay. So it's Wendy from uh, Bald Knob Farmstead again. So things don't always go as planned. Things break on the farm and well, our Ford, which is behind me, uh, which is our workhorse, it's our tow truck, it's our hay hauler, has a broken leg. Gosh darn it. Uh, it's an old truck. Uh, this is our seven mile per gallon truck. Uh, for those of you who don't know about U-joints, this is the cap of a U-joint. Guess what it's supposed to have in there? Grease and bearings. Guess what it doesn't have in all four caps? <laughs> Uh, no grease, no bearings, all four of them. So, uh, yeah, I just, it was a matter of time. I mean, it's an old truck. It's a 94. Uh, we're in the market for a new truck, of course, but, um, until that happens, uh, this has been a fantastic truck and look folks, I get it. You like Fords, you hate Fords, you like Chevy's, you hate Chevy's, whatever. I love them and hate them both for various reasons. Depends on if they break down on me or not. This Ford it needed work when we got it, but it has been a great truck. So no hate mail, Chevy lovers. Um, things come in threes. The truck broke down. Our wood stove also broke down. That little switch down at the bottom, when it gets hot enough, it turns the fan on. When it cools down, it turns the fan off. Well, the fan was on all night. It was cold. The, thermo or the thermostat apparently stopped working. Whatever. So things come in threes, right? Well, our beehive died. This is our third year having bees. Third year, they've all died. Thought we did everything right. We insulated w during the cold snap. They were strong. We treated for Varroa, I think in September. So Varroa might. They still died. So overall, we probably spent $200 a quart on honey over the last three years. Eh, not worth it. Um, so things come in threes. This beast is what we are fixing this weekend. So... Stay tuned for that. Okay, so the auto parts store <laughs> gave me the wrong U-joint. Gave me the driveline U-joint, not the front end, the axle U-joint. So I went back to the auto parts store and thought they gave me the right seal. They gave me the completely wrong seal. <sighs> The guy argued with me, of course. He said, nope, that's the one your truck takes. He said, I know that's the part you need. And I argued and I said, it's my truck. I know what I need. So I happened to have a photo with me because I just, I pulled the parts. I pulled this everything off the truck. I didn't, I pulled the brakes, pulled the, uh, the calipers, pulled the rotor, didn't have the seal pulled out of it. Anyway, he argued with me. Lo and behold, I had a picture and I said, look, dude, this is exactly the seal that I need. And he shut up pretty quickly. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm a little bit annoyed. I don't like it when the auto parts store argues with me. It's my truck, my parts. I saw the parts. 
Don't argue with me anyway. My husband is out calling coyotes. He just started a couple minutes ago. We have a big coyote problem here. Uh, one one uh, YouTube page that I am an absolute diehard fan over is uh, Sandy Brock, uh, Sheepishly, Sheepishly Me. Um, she's terrified of coyotes, and I am too. I hate them. We've lost a lot of animals because of coyotes. So my husband's calling. He just started calling. It's really foggy right now, though, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you where he's standing. Um, as soon as he turned on the call and it sounded like a wounded rabbit or rabbit in distress or something, um, <clears throat> we had calls coming back right over my shoulder to the north, I guess, northeast. Um, pretty close. Hey, coyotes. So let's see if I can get a video of him. Right there. Right between the haystacks. And he's actually looking in the direction that I heard the response call from those coyotes. So they are a nuisance. They will eat your chickens, your lambs, your foals. They will lure your dogs. <clears throat> they will kill your dogs. We've lost a big dog to coyotes. So that's what he's doing. So I'm going to be quiet and finish chores. And uh, sorry, folks, if you are on the coyote side, but if you ever see what they can do to an animal, Wolves especially, if they're not native to the area that you're living in. Or even if they are, boy, they are destructive. They will kill and leave what they killed. It's it's unbelievable. So um, coyotes are a huge problem here. So we try to take care of them as swiftly as possible. Okay. Hey. Sorry about the bumpy road, but... That's what we're doing. So this is the other driveway to go up to the upper part of our property where my mom and dad's house used to be. And there's probably eight inches of snow on the driveway and we're gonna try to make it. Without plowing. Without plowing. <laughs> to the coyotes. Yes, because we are going coyote calling at the very least. Get off the <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, we're not gonna make it. Uh oh. makes dinner is a loser so not to lie I'm probably still gonna make dinner don't think we're gonna make it because folks you can't see it but we're actually gonna make it where we're trying to go up the driveway all the way around through the fog and up to there that you can't see because it's in the fog And it's slushy, so, huh. Oh, and we have bald tires, too, so. I was going to say, um, I'm voting we're not going to make it. Go ahead. I'm voting we're not going to make it. <laughs> Coyote hunting on the farm, folks. Uphill in the slush. 30 feet. 
feet. <laughs> We're going to be here all night, folks. No, we won't. Perfect time for coyote hunting. No, we won't. We'll be all night. You might be close. <laughs> I don't know how Odie is staying on the console. <laughs> Sweetie, I've taught him well. That boy, I've taught him. So yeah, we tried going forward <clears throat> and weren't getting very far. So now we're trying to go backward. No, we're not. Uh, we are going backward. I can turn back around. That's where we came from. That is where we're trying to get. Okay, so we didn't make it. We had to turn around. Uh, it was pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> the driveway was terrible. Um, it's super, super slushy. So it's, I mean, it's, it's just half wet snow. So we cannot get any traction, but we came home and, okay, so there's Gretchen's house in the fog. We saw two coyotes and I think it was the one, at least one that I heard it was back up here. Two coyotes came straight across the hill and must have seen us or something and then just scampered off and then ran like up over that hill. So we are not calling them on to the property. So before anybody says anything about, well, you have the call, which we had set up over there at the hay pile. Um, the coyotes are already here. We've got a ton of trail camera pictures. We've got uh, tracks everywhere. So this, this is our upper driveway and then our main driveway comes down there. There are just literally thousands of tracks. Uh, thousands of footprints everywhere by multiple, uh, multiple coyotes. So different sizes, ages, whatever. We're not calling them to the property. They are already here. So yeah. Yeah. Joey, Joey saw him. So he's a little bit worked up anyway. So, yep, we did see him. Um, unfortunately we had just gone inside and put the gun away and, uh, didn't uh, have time to go get it. And anyway, so uh, that's one big reason why we have this kind of fencing, why it's such small, uh, small holes for one. So the sheep don't get out, but for two, um, I, I will try to get up to the upper pasture and show you guys, um, what, what I'm doing for coyote control here in just a second. Okay. So I'm a little out of breath because there's about a foot of snow out here. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of what I did around the whole perimeter. I put chicken wire at the bottom. So granted, this probably isn't going to stop them. They can jump through higher, I guess, but I have it all the way around the entire perimeter. Oh, nope, this way. And then in front of the trees and then down. So I've got, Odie, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> That is the most lazy farm dog you will ever meet. He <laughs> can't get traction. So anyway, I just put this all the way around the pasture. Uh, I'm just terrified of coyotes getting in here. We've lost a lot of animals due to coyotes. And uh, since we can't see this upper pasture up in this area, because um, there's, there's our trailer. So we can't... Oh, well, more like right there. Uh, we can't see this upper pasture, especially if they're having their babies. Uh, and I would like for them to, to lamb down in our living area. So I might actually block this off before they start lambing, but I don't like coyotes. I'm scared of them. They're mean, nasty, destructive critters, and they will start eating an animal before they're dead. So I, I know folks, it is the circle of life. I get that. But if I can prevent any of my animals from getting eaten and attacked by coyotes, by all means, I'm gonna freaking do it. So anyway, our property actually goes, well, really, if you can see, there's a fence line that runs up this way. It goes over the hill and then right down here. So we have 60 acres. It goes up over that hill too. So um, most of it is non-workable. We cannot work it for one. It's super rocky up top, but for two, we just don't have the water. We're, um, I think the corner of our property is about 2,800 feet up. So we have domestic water, but we don't have any irrigation water. So 
kind of a bummer. But anyway, uh, Sandy Brock, if you ever watch this, I share your fear of coyotes. <laughs> totally get it. So um, anyway, that was our, well, here's our upper pasture view. There's the pond. Um, so anyway, that was not really a failed coyote hunt. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more of that, but it was just uh, an adventure. It's the weekend. Well, it is now. It's Saturday. So anyway, all right, folks, we're going to go fix the fort. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but there is a coyote, which sounds like it's right down on my neighbor's driveway. It sounds like it's right, well, right down there. Just one though. Usually I hear them and they, they respond back. So anyway, erg. my husband's in working on the pickup. I'm going to leave him alone while I go do chores and... You guys will see me soon. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to hear or be notified of my uh, new videos, hit the bell. And you guys will be seeing these guys really soon. Yeah, sorry folks. Everything's going to be a little bit slow until spring picks up. But hi, Chester. Hi, Chester. How you doing? <sighs> <laughs> Dwayne's been pushing Chester around. I noticed that Dwayne had um, a little bit of blood on his horn this morning, and Chester has um, scurs, which are little tiny nubs of horns. Not really useful for anything, but bleeding when they get hit by him. Oh, boys will be boys. <laughs>